Alrighty, here we have my Voron V02. And I've done a lot of content, especially about the Bamboo Lab X1C recently, but I wanted to take a moment and go around each machine and talk a little bit more about each thing. And in this case, I'm not going to be able to probably name all the different creators, all the different mods that I put in here, but I'll at least be able to kind of just talk over the concept of the machine and ultimately some of the things that I can show you here. So generally my concept for all of these machines is all the parts for the machine must be able to be created on the machine itself. So as this is a relatively small build plate, 120 by 120 by 120, that is limiting things, but it is a small machine. So everything you see here was actually printed on the machine itself. So that's a really cool thing about it. Um, from there, there's been a few different iterations over the years. I got this serialized, you can see up there, V02661. I got that serialized, I think it was back in 2023. So with uh, Vorons, even like the 0G back there, there's a community behind it, and when you build your printer, when it's in a functional state, you can submit for a serial number if you so choose. I like to do that. You don't necessarily have to. I did it for my Switchwire, did it for the Merc 1.1, and I haven't submitted yet for my Voron 2.4, but I certainly will do that. But at this point, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this machine and give a broader overview about it because it's just such a sweet machine. This is one of my favorite machines. This is the first printer that I've truly built myself. I actually bought a kit. I got the kit, uh, kit from Sabor, sabor.com, S-I-B-O-O-R, and I was really happy with the kit. I opted for the ABS parts to come with it because at the time I didn't have a machine that could print ABS. I mean, I had Ender 3s, Ender 5s, all those sorts of things, but I just, I didn't have an enclosure. So I just was like, you know what? Get the first parts printed. After I build this part printer, then I can just reprint everything. And that's exactly what I did. So yeah, it's been through four or five iterations combined through that, probably about 2,500 hours this machine has seen, even back over here. This is one of the original tool heads. Well, not the original tool head, uh, but the second tool head that I had in there. That's a Dragon Burner V6, direct drive extruder, uh, PCB, like CAN bus, all that stuff. I left it there because it's just kind of cool. But at this point, I'm going to talk over more of this machine. So uh, I'll actually start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So we have at the bottom here, these are the Stealth Skirt Extended Feet. This, uh, all the black parts are actually printed out of ABS and the red parts are printed out of ASA. The black stuff is from Sparta 3D and the red is from Polymaker. They are both uh, sparkle versions or they're quote unquote galaxy versions for uh, Polymaker. But yeah, these are the extended feet. So this is not what you'd see on a stock Voron V02. They're a little bit more streamlined, but I just really liked how these feet kind of splayed it out and they just look really slick on there. So uh, the feet here, I actually designed and printed out of TPU as well, because actually over here, I liked this style of feet on my Voron switch wire. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna design some for this. Honestly, there probably was some out there, but this was such a quick part for me to design that I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just do it myself. So yeah, that's the extended feet. From there, these are actually the stock skirts, but I did a color mod, well, essentially just a color swap. I printed the red down in a mesh, and then I printed the black over top of it. This, it actually was printed on this machine, so I just did a pause, swapped the filament, and now that I have the AMS, I could do, I could do a lot more with it, but that's just what I did at the time. Over here, this is another, this is actually another stealth skirt mod, but that's for the Nomi V2. So this is just a little touch screen there. Uh, honestly, I just more use it for just percentages and kind of the status of my print because it's a little clunky to use. Like you have to swipe and it's, it's honestly a little clunky to use. And I have a machine right there, my Raspberry Pi 5, my Pyron Man. That's actually what I use to access my printers or I mean, I have another, I have a machine over there too. So I have machines in a few places that I can access these from. Um, going up here, this is, I mean, a lot of this stuff on the outside, these panels, that's uh, the stock panel clips, even the handle. Like I actually didn't change that since the beginning. 
Uh, these are some stealth skirt mods. Again, stealth skirt, always going stealth. Or not stealth skirt, but stealth mod handles. I just added these handles because it's just really nice to pick up this little machine. Uh, I did point this one out at the beginning, but that's just another handle. That's so that you can open the top hat really nicely. The door opens up fully, fully and completely. Uh, but I'm going to work around the sides first before I go in there. So yeah, that's the stealth mod handles over here. This, this is just a spacer. Uh, I designed this simple spacer because I found that the spool would ride up there and it would make contact with the fan. So I just designed this silly little spacer that just sits there and that way the filament doesn't rub on the fan. This is actually a foldable spool holder because I have a backpack over there and it fits very nicely in that backpack once I folded the spool holder over. So I got this foldable version. It kind of just pops into place, locks in, and it's it's decent, it's decent. Like it, it holds its position pretty good and then you just kick it up and then it folds over. Uh, back here, this is just, again, like I said, part of my uh, theory behind these machines is everything must be able to be printed on it. So this was again, printed all on there, but it's a, just a multi-part replacement for the back panel. And this is, I think an 8010 fan. I just put that fan into place because I just wanted some additional cooling because that's where the main board and everything live. Um, I will in a moment, I'll pause this and then I'll switch over so that I can actually show you inside of there. Cause there's a couple other cool things in there. Uh, but we'll work around the back, go to the front of the machine and then I'll open it up down here. This is, there's actually a clipper expander that lives in there. Um, so again, when I pause it, I'll actually open that up and then I can show you the clipper expander back there. So that's really about all going on back there, but I just really like this back panel mod because I just was looking for, I designed a different one to put a fan on there, but then I found this one on, I think it was on printables or something. And I just really liked the design. So I'm like, you know what, printing that up, replacing it and go from there. So let's go to the inside of the machine. As you saw, it opens up quite nicely. So this tool head is a little bit different than you may be used to seeing. Uh, as I showed you before, I can even quickly go back over there, right here. This was what was on there. Most of my machines, I run a direct drive extruder. So the extruder is up here. So that's actually where you feed the filament. I went kind of back to my roots in a sense uh, with a Bowden setup. So the extruder now, it actually lives back there. Um, the reason behind that was because the more weight that you have on the tool head, the more resonance that you'll get. So you can compensate that, uh, compensate for that with input shaping and things like that. But the more weight that you can remove off the tool head, the better. So in this case, I designed actually this little arm here that holds this breakout PCB. I think this is the V0 umbilical plus. So it has this PCB here that it attaches to this really nice cable that just streamlines all the wiring. So I just wired everything into here connected all my cables. There's honestly a lot going on in this little tiny tool head. RGB LED, RGB LEDs under here, dual part fans. There's a hot end fan. Of course, the hot end, it is, I think it's just a ceramic heater, like a triangle lab ceramic heater or something. Nothing too fancy in there. But of course, there's a thermistor for the hot end. And I actually put a thermistor up here. Uh, it's kind of more over there. But that's just for heat creep, uh, because then if uh, if there's anything, any weird aberrations and the heat starts to rise too much, then it will just shut off the machine. So that was just a nice feature that I put in there because uh, safety, safety is a good thing. Uh, going, actually, we'll go back to this little PCB here. So with the V02 or the V0 umbilical plus, there is actually an accelerometer on this little PCB. And there's temperature sensors. So there's, there's like one, two, three, oh, over there, BME 280. That's a temperature and humidity sensor living back there. So there's quite a few different sensors just in this, uh, in this little establishment of this printer here. But it's just so I can get some login, get some good information about what's happening in the machine. Uh, moving down over here, we have a Nevermore. This is the Nevermore V4 carbon filtration. Again, it may look large, but it absolutely fit on this little build plate. So I was able to print all of that on this machine. 
Uh, these panels, these actually didn't come with the machine. I got them custom ordered from MN Laser in the US. I'm up in Canada, but I got them from MN Laser because I just love the textured panels. I got them there. I got them there. I got them there. Uh, I don't have textured panels in the X1C because, you know, it's, it's all enclosed. But I really like the look of the textured panels, so I opted for those in here. And it just uh, spruces up the thing. So, yeah, I think that's... Uh, oh, the uh, Fisec... Fisec, something like that. That's the aluminum uh, bed arm or something. The standard V02, it has like a couple extrusions and 3D printed parts that you put together for the uh, Z axis uh, for the build plate. And I just really like the solid one piece version of the Fisec one. So I changed it over to that. Okay, uh, now that's, yeah, I think that's most of it for the inside. Um, that's, of course, all stock stuff, the AB motors. Uh, oh, yeah, matchstick. I think that's uh, matchstick, daylight on a stick. No, that's, um, I don't remember what it's called, but, of course, more RGB LEDs so that I can have just some nice lighting in there. Uh, yeah, so I think that's all for, I guess, the outside right now. So I'm going to give this a pause, and then I'm going to flip around and give you a, more, uh, a better view of the back. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Cheers. And through the magic of video editing, we have some parts removed. So now you can see what's actually going on in the back of this machine. So this is um, the main board here. That's a Manta M5P with a CB1. And I got the A and B motors, you know, XY. But because it's a core XY, it's uh, the A and B motors. The TMC 2240s. And then just good old TMC 20. 2209s for the Z and the extruder. So yeah, I just, I really like these big tree tech Manta boards because it's just all in one and it's combined. You have your uh, compute module there. It's just contained so nicely. So I did design, uh, you can't really see them, but I did design the motherboard or main board mount for this because I just, I had to, <laughs> I had to put everything inside of here. So this is what I was talking about before when I was talking about the extruder, the Bowden setup. This is actually, I think it's called at the time it was called, uh, the Voron night watch or the Voron pocket watch, which is essentially just a, mini Bowden style extruder still uses a pancake style stepper motor but I just found that it was like super compact and there was a nice mount that was designed to fit specifically in the v02 so I opted for that extruder and down here we have the clipper expander board so this one is really just for uh, there's a couple thermistors there and I think that was fans yeah I think that might be the fans uh, that I connected into this board. So I didn't need it for a whole lot of things, but because I have so many different temperature sensors in this machine, I just wanted this breakout board so that I can just, you know, log all the things or have all the information that I want. So yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's kind of about it for the back of the machine. Um, but it's just, it's such a sleek little machine, very compact. Uh, I won't bother showing you underneath, but that's actually where the power supply lives underneath there. So you can't really totally see it because the bed's all the way down, but the fasteners are in there that retain the power supply in place. So yeah, all the power just lives underneath. I think it was LRS 150, I mean, well, power supply, something like that. Just 150 watt, might be a 200 watt. Don't remember exactly. It's been a little while since I had it open. But yeah, ultimately, this is just a fantastic little machine. And yeah, I hope, hope you enjoyed the broader over... Oh, hello, kitty. Um, I hope you enjoyed the broader overview of the machine just to kind of show more about it uh, and talk a little bit more about this specific machine. And with that, yeah, I do plan on certainly doing a video now about these other machines, my Mercury 1.1 with Hydra, the Voron, uh, Voron 2.4, Bamboo X1C, I mean, I've been doing a bunch of different videos about it, just the mods. If you've if you've seen a bamboo, you're familiar with a bamboo, but I've done a bunch of videos about the mods, so I don't know if I need to do a walk around about that. This one, my Voron Switchwire, I might do a video about this one. I'm actually, honestly, I'm looking to get rid of this one. I'm looking to sell this one just because I find that I can do everything that I need with these four machines. 
So yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I like that machine. I built it very happy with it. But uh, after I got the X1C, it was like, maybe I should move on from that one. Anyways, I, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, you stay classy out there. Cheers.